Hello viewer, welcome to Artistry. Uh, here is Buruburu Technical Institute and I am your presenter, Tyrus Wanyoike. So today we are in carpentry and joinery and before us uh, we have uh, quite a number of tools uh, ranging from power tools all the way to hand tools and maintenance uh, lubricants like the WD-40 and all the rest. So we shall go through it uh, in the introduction stage. We get to see the number of tools that we most likely use in our homes. We have them in our workplaces. We have them in our mobile places that we want to put displays or to put some other kind of uh, structures. So among the most common, and I know many of you know it, is the plane, the plane, the jack plane. This one, we learned about it from long time ago in primary schools. So I am sure that at least you have an idea what this one is used for. But today we are doing it as fresh. We are doing it as we are doing it to fresh people. So this particular plane that I'm holding is plane number five or an equivalent of it will be jack plane. So the jack plane is a general purpose plane. The jack plane is used for most of the planing ranging from starting to plane all the way to the finishing stage. So that's why we call it the, the general purpose plane. But we also have other types of plane. And just uh, almost next to it, we have the small uh, smoothing plane. Smoothing plane is shorter and it resembles the jack plane except the size and mostly it is used for finishing so that is how we hold the plane and we'll come to that later a while later so those are the two kinds of plane that we have right now but apart from this we also have a bigger plane a bigger than general purpose plane we call it a triplane triplane is usually longer than this and this is used for planing long surfaces so if we need to plane a piece of wood from that end to this end to make it flat, to maintain it flat, we use the triplane. Then when we cut it, when we are using the, making the joints, we use the general purpose plane or the jack plane. And then we use the smoothing plane for finishing. So those are on planes because I know many of you are familiar with planes. Because at one point or another, you may need to put smooth a piece of wood uh, now from there we have another very common tool which i know many of you can have an idea on and this one we call it the chisel so we have many different kinds of chisels and the one i'm holding right now uh, is a bevel edge chisel so the bevel edge chisel uh, has some bevels on the sides then it has the 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 sharp part in front here and then we also have the handle uh, and we use a mallet to hit the, the chisel this is 22 millimeters here we have another chisel here which has a different handle it's kind of hard plastic but we also we can also have it in wood handle it's also a bevel edge chisel that is also sharp so the sharp part we try to maintain it as sharp as possible and this part is never hit using a hammer it's a common temptation but we always have to avoid hitting with a hammer here yeah. because once you hit it with a hammer it will mushroom once it mushrooms it even becomes a, a safety uh, hazard. Now from there we have another very common tool known as the tri-square. The tri-square is used to test angles which are right angles and 45 degrees angle. So with the tri-square we can be able to maintain uh, structure uh, and the diagonals are going to be right the square is going to be right and the structure will remain 
uh, sound and very firm after construction. So the tri-square, many of us know it. At one point or so in life, we have used a tri-square, but in bigger, uh, in, in a bigger picture, we may require a bigger tri-square, especially for the masons, for surveyors, in, or even when you are erecting a house, you need to adapt other ways of getting the square apart from using the tri-square. So the tools ahead of us here, most of them, if not all, most of them are used for joinery. We have carpentry, we also have joinery. So most of these tools are for joinery purpose. Joinery is where we, we, we plane our pieces, we use the joints and glue to put our piece together. And good examples of items in joinery are tables, we have chairs, we have a bench like the one ahead of me, and many other structures that we use. So we are going step by step on tools because carpentry and joinery tools are so many. There are so many. I just have one dot in a big ocean of tools. So ahead of me, I also have the, uh, the marking gauge. The marking gauge is used for marking along the grains in a piece of wood. And at this point, I have to demonstrate now because our course is practical oriented. It is a course that we do practically. And if I just explain to you that the marking gauge is used for making uh, 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 marks along the grain, uh, we may not get the concept very clear. So just get a piece right here. This is a piece of wood. And I'm going to make a mark on it. Along the grains is this way. And then across the grains is this way. So in this my piece, I'm going to mark, uh, let's say, 30 millimeters. Here we use millimeters. And from this edge, I will mark 30 millimeters, put a dot, and then adjust my marking gauge and do a line from top all along the grain. So here is my piece. Put it near the head there. We use the tape measure. The tape measure is a very important tool also that I should have. Uh, I should also uh, explain the use. The tape measure has different calibrations on it. So on the tape measure, we have the lower, uh, the lower part, which has centimeters which are visible from, uh, uh, from what you can see. The centimeters are here. Once we reach here now, this is 10 centimeters, 17 centimeters, 20 centimeters, and so on and so on. But right now we are going to use millimeters. Millimeters are 10 millimeters make one centimeter. So from one uh, number to the other, we have 10 millimeters inside there. So uh, up to here, this is 100 millimeters. Up to here, this is 200 millimeters. So we are going only to measure about 30 millimeters on this piece. And then we put a dot and then we continue with our marking. So on the use of the measure, the upper part of the calibrations would denote inches. If you want to measure anything in inches, then you use the upper part of the tape measure, which is, uh, which is having letters one, two, three, and so on and so on. Up to here, this is one foot. So we also have feet on this tape measure. We can measure it in feet. We can do it in inches. We can also measure in centimeters. We can measure in millimeters. And then we can also measure in meters. Uh, 100 centimeters. 100 centimeters will make one meter. 1,000 millimeters will make one meter. So if we want to, make, to measure one meter, we can either use the centimeters or we can use the millimeters. So for right now, I'm going to measure 30 millimeters on this piece. I'm going to hold it with a bench vise. We have a good bench vise here. We have another bench vise right here. So I'm going to hold it with the bench vise so that you can see clearly from that end. Then I'm going to measure 30 millimeters on it. Put a dot. 30 millimeters. Put a dot. And then I use my marking gauge. The marking gauge is right here with me. I'm doing this for demonstration purpose, but 
when you're doing it practically you work on the bench so right there I tighten the screw and then here from here to here is 30 millimeters then I can make a mark on my piece for it to be visible I can also uh, repeat the line with the with the pencil the pencil is also a very important tool sorry the last edge is not part of the marking so the pencil is very important in this trade you cannot work without a tape measure and a pencil so immediately you are going to the workshop or you want to embark in an activity make sure you have these two uh, together with the protective gear that is the apron i'm holding my apron also has a pocket so i can use the pocket to put my pencil to put my tape measure that makes sure i don't forget them once i live here i will go with them i will come back with them and they sh should be my tools if anyone else is working with me you have to be having your tape measure and your pencil so those are the simple rules that we observe in the in the workshop in carpentry and, and joinery so i've demonstrated the, the use of the marking gauge so this part of the marking gauge is known as the spar the spar is a sharp part and it makes the mark so from there we have the screw then we have uh, this long piece that is used for the sliding sliding of the, the of the marking gauge so the marking gauge is not very common many people are used to marking with the finger which sometimes work but in joinery it's not very much recommended this is how they do it you hold it this way and then you make a mark it will still mark but it is not as accurate as the gauge mark so this one we call it the gauge mark and once we are marking oh, we are marking for a joint that is where we use precision with precision you can't just mark a rough line like this and settle for that for a good joint so we use the marking gauge for that purpose good now moving on we have this other tool this tool resembles a hammer it resembles a hammer it is known as a percussion tool it is known as a mallet it's a percussion tool percussion meaning it's used for hitting percussion group of tools include this one the hammer uh, the mallet this one we call it the mallet so we use the mallet to drive the chisel remember we said we cannot use a hammer for driving the chisel we are going to do it practically here so that we can see the use of the mallet so i'll again use my piece and clamp it i'll clamp it with the vise and then i will hold my, my mallet and then hold my chisel and then i will hit the other side From there, I will now hit along the grains. And then I will continue chiseling. So the use of the mallet is to hit the chisel and also other. Uh, pieces of tools which we don't need to destroy the head so for now we will take a short break and then we'll be back we see more of these tools as well as a demonstration of their use and then we will we'll move to the next stage thank you